Hello people, in this video let us look at person distribution. What distribution? Person distribution. And of what? Of the disease, right? How diseases are distributed amongst people. So currently where are we? In epidemiological methods, that is epidemiological studies, observational studies and descriptive studies. This is where we are. In descriptive studies you have three things. Time, place, person. person. So currently here we are person. So we have finished time, we have finished place. Now we will move on to person. Descriptive studies. So what are we looking at people? Person distribution. Person distribution. So basically here they have divided this as age, sex or we can say gender to be very um, okay, gender, ethnicity, marital status, occupation, social class, behavior, stress, migration. Let's try to understand it without the textbook explaining it to us. Age. Different ages can have different diseases, yes. What about gender? Um, more um, Female are affected with some kind of diseases, men, yes. Uh, ethnicity, yes, some races, etc. Marital status, how does this matter? Do married people have different kind of problems? Maybe gyne uh, obstetrics kind of a thing, what else? Occupation, does the occupation matters? Yes, we have seen pneumoconiosis and occupational diseases, yes. Social class, yes, you know that if it is uh, people are living in a, a higher uh, social class, then they will have diabetes and hypertension and all that. Lower social class, they can have some uh, communicable diseases because of hygiene and all that. Behavior, your behavior decides your health person. Stress, some uh, very, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it, type A personalities or who want to achieve everything in life, they will have some kind of diseases. Migration. Migration means what guys? You have already seen migration studies even in um, person dis uh, place distribution, right? So if people move from one place to the other, will they be affected based on the local environment or based on their genetics? All that comes in migration studies. So how is it going people? Shall we get started? So just for our understanding, this is the rough way of trying to understand the disease. As you know, this is a descriptive study. This is not perfect. It could be an incomplete hypothesis that finally we will arrive at. After arriving at this uh, uh, incomplete hypothesis after, at the end of descriptive studies, basically we come up with a hypothesis which is usually incomplete. Then you have to prove that using analytical studies. So whatever we are doing is just kind of an observation. We are trying to understand how the uh, person distribution is there in disease. Okay, let us look at this age. Now, uh, different age groups are there, isn't it? A child is there, adolescent is there, reproductive age group, geriatrics, perinatal period, period of viability for a baby, right? This is an age, abortion, stillbirth. So these are all different age groups. Are you getting, uh, people just remember this one, adolescent, child, child, adolescent, adult, and adult you can also have uh, reproductive age women as a separate thing. Geriatrics. Here adult should come, isn't it? Why did they not write adult here? Okay. So in a child, what in all diseases can be there? Measles, right? In uh, adults, what can be there? Or in uh, geriatrics, you can have cancer. Middle age itself, they are saying cancer. Atherosclerosis in old age. Atherosclerosis in old age. Adult, actually, they are saying uh, middle age, there can be cancer. In child, they are saying what can be there? Measles. Okay. Guys, are you getting it? Then if there is a communicable disease, it's uniform, they are saying. Communicable disease is uniform in all age groups. That's what the textbook says. Some diseases have bimodal distribution. What do you mean by bimodal distribution? They occur in young and old. But in between they may not occur. Like look at this. Bimodal variation in Hodgkin's disease. So Hodgkin's disease you can see at the age of 25, 30 they have, then again they will get it, or if they have missed it at the same, they can get it again at 80. Usually you will see both kinds of patients, young people at 20, 30, or you can see 80s uh, kind of people for Hodgkin's disease, that's bimodal. This bimodal, they are not just saying for uh, Hodgkin's, bimodal, they are saying it is there even for leukemia, breast, female breast obviously, female, okay, it can be there in men also, but female breast cancer, they are saying that can be bimodal. So what else they are including here? Hodgkin's, Hodgkin's, Hodgkin's disease, okay. So the textbook says that this bimodal distribution is something that fascinates the epidemiologists and there are two points relating to bimodality which makes their interpretation difficult. Small number of observations the absence of bimodality does not signify that data have come from homogeneous source. 
so they have some problems with it also so guys uh, we have put that information here you can read it, uh, read this so let's move on now after age what is the next thing they are talking about sex or gender let us say so basically i wish they could have a better word for this anyways as of now it is not there so you can uh, see that disease in relationship to this okay and uh, you can also use indices like sex ratio in india definitely uh, they don't want female children because they think that females should leave after marriage so my advice guys if you are a girl don't leave your parents after marriage show it to the world that a daughter is no less than a son okay then women are more affected by diabetes mellitus hypothyroidism and obesity how sad we are affected more oh then what else guys um, diseases like lung cancer coronary heart disease are less frequent in women that means we can say it's more in men right so men what is more lung cancer and coronary coronary heart disease okay these are more in men this may not just be because of genetics or something men have some occupations that make them more susceptible and women have some occupations because of which they are more susceptible not exactly linked to the sex it could be mainly because of occupation okay then in fact it is 4 to 1 male to female ratio in lung cancer that has helped to identify cigarette smoking is the cause so men why are they getting this because of cigarette smoking that is why men are getting it more so why blame that men will get it more they are getting it more because of their own habits behavior we should put it here let's move on to the third point here ethnicity ethnicity guys some races will have some diseases more and some races will have some diseases less isn't it okay we will move on to marital status in some countries they are saying in countries where studies on mortality when they checked marital status they have checked wow people who marry they die late it seems wow Ma mortality rates this is mortality rate they are saying is less not longevity or life expectancy interesting mortality rates were lower for married people whether male or female guys uh, not uh, we are not saying this but the textbook is saying this people who are married these people are um, more secure protected and they usually lead a more sober life so because they are sober and always at home probably they are not dying what do you say then marital status is a risk factor for some diseases also like what cervical cancer cervical cancer obviously they are having sex and they will have cervical cancer cervical cancer okay then uh, how what do you feel guys so if people have multiple sexual partners they will have cancer uh, will be more yeah then let's move on to occupation so basically you know right silicosis coal miners disease and if people have sedentary what and all diseases they can get heart disease so coal mine silicosis in sedentary life you can have heart disease okay then social class let's go to social class now so here they saying upper will have low uh, coronary heart disease hypertension diabetes and lower will have some other issues maybe communicable diseases or nutrition disorders what do you say protein energy malnutrition and all they can have right then coming to behavior see your behavior is responsible you drive rashly you don't wear helmet you will meet accident right so it is your behavior it's your uh, life will you smoke cigarette then it's up to you you'll get lung cancer then are you overeating are you taking drugs drug abuse uh, then overeating no ex not exercising drug abuse etc etc so if we this list will be endless i think no now let's move on to the next point which is the next point stress and that is exactly me so what am i susceptible to so many diseases probably they didn't give a specific name here but they're saying whatever you have you'll have exacerbation of symptoms so whatever disease you have the symptoms will be exacerbated because of your stress so relax the you know you are more susceptible to disease because of the stress susceptibility is more okay 
exacerbation of symptoms compliance to medical regimen so are we going to comply or not okay lastly we are going to migration guys uh, people who migrate what will happen they'll bring the diseases with them or they will come and catch some new diseases earlier you know rural problems were like leprosy filariasis and um, <clears throat> malaria etc but now it has become now because of migration from rural to urban urban has these problems okay see guys we have already covered this in migration studies in uh, person uh, uh, per place distribution weight so you remember this where migrants will bring disease or they will catch the disease which is there and we want to study whether they are affected by the environment in the new place or because of their genetics what makes them more susceptible and uh, also you should consider duration of stay short term per long term permanent are they staying is the first generation how is it affected is it affected because of the environment or the genetics is the second generation affected because of the environment or the genetics all this already came in migration studies so in person distribution and place distribution both of them you can write migration okay so guys in this video we looked at uh, person distribution right we have already looked at time and place so that is describing the disease after this what will come measurement of disease comparing it formulation of the hypothesis measurement of disease means what what is the load disease load in the population what is the morbidity what is the incidence of the disease what is the prevalence of the disease all that you know no guys anyways this video is only for person distribution so let's complete that person distribution part of it so guys uh, young people so we we'll let us go back to age and look at it young people are affected by what and all diseases neonatal tetanus and neonate can get neonatal tetanus rota virus will affect them then polio is again from 0 to 5 years now measles is up to 3 years mumps 5 to 9 years chickenpox 5 to 9 years school going children will get rheumatic fever is 5 to 15 years so these are the approximate uh, you know peak time that they get it but it can happen otherwise also. we are not giving you hard and fast thing okay then next thing uh, let us look at old people above 40 people will get what diabetes mellitus hypertension coronary heart disease above 50 people will get cancer cataract etc there is no age distribution for influenza typhoid cholera no age distribution young people also will get old people also will get let's take a recap guys what did we look at in this video in this video we wanted to look at person distribution exactly where are we in epidemiological methods observational studies descriptive studies in descriptive studies you know you will describe the disease based on time place and person so we are looking at person description uh, in this video we have finished time and place right person means what and all the age the gender the marital state the occupation social status education of the person also birth order of the person if you are first born child can you be prone to more diseases or if you are second born or if you are last born Family size also matters, height, weight of the person, blood pressure, blood cholesterol, personal habits, all these will be person distribution. First, let us look at age. In age, what we have seen, there are different age groups like child, adolescent, adult, reproductive age group, geriatric uh, age group, perinatal period, period of viability for a newborn, um, aborted, stillbirth, etc. So, different age groups are there. A child can get what? A child can get a neonatal tetanus, rotavirus, polio, measles, mumps, chickenpox, rheumatic fever, etc. And then adult can get what? Like uh, diabetes, mellitus, hypertension, coronary heart disease, cancer, cataract, etc. Atherosclerosis also we saw, right, in geriatric population. And some uh, diseases have no age distribution like uh, influenza, typhoid, cholera, etc. Some diseases show bimodal, uh, bimodal uh, variation like uh, Hodgkin's disease it is there in young people 20 30 around or it will be there in uh, 80s kind of a age okay even leukemia even female breast cancer etc then coming to the next point here on um, in person distribution on the uh, sex so uh, because of their occupation also it can be women are getting more diabetes mellitus hypothyroidism obesity etc men get lung cancer more and coronary heart disease lung cancer mainly because they smoke and uh, could be because of their occupation ethnicity some races have more of some diseases and some other races have less of those diseases like we have seen ethnicity i uh, will give you a better example see japanese are more affected by stomach cancer etc right because they eat some uh, salted uh, fish or whatever salted food and when it comes to americans they are more prone to what western people are more prone to breast cancer etc right so you can just check on that then coming to marital status married people live longer or they have higher lesser mortality rate and cervical cancer is more in people who are married obviously and people who have multiple sexual partners 
Occupation, guys, coal miners, silicosis, all this you have studied in pneumoconiosis, right? Occupational lung disease. There can be a lot of other occupational diseases also, not just lung disease. Sedentary life can lead to heart disease. Then coming to social class, upper so, uh, class people are more affected by coronary heart disease, hypertension and diabetes. Lower people, uh, they have nutritional issues, uh, protein energy, malnutrition, etc. And even I think because of hygiene, communicable diseases. Behavior, guys, um, uh, people's behavior like uh, cigarette smoking, Accidents can happen because of their uh, carelessness, overeating, drug abuse, so all those will be behavior problems. Stress, stressed people, stressed people are more susceptible to diseases. They have, they have exacerbations of the symptoms which could be very mild in others. They will be exacerbated in these people who are stressed. Okay. Migration also, uh, people who are migrating can bring the disease or they can uh, catch a disease which is there in that place. We have looked at that in migration studies. So they can either be affected by the new environment or because of their own genetics, they can have some issues. Okay. So that is what we have seen in this video, guys. So we have seen till here, right? Person, uh, time, place, person, description, etc. Now coming to measurement of disease, what will you see? Measurement of disease means a disease, what is the morbidity uh, ratio, uh, rate, right? Morbidity rate, what's the mortality rate, what is the incidence, what is the prevalence of the disease. You can compare it with other uh, places, for people, time, etc. So that will be measurement of disease. Here you have two studies, guys, cross-sectional study that is also called as prevalence study and then you have some longitudinal study. So uh, this cross-sectional study or prevalence study is actually at a point of time you're studying, right? So it's a prevalence study. You're studying this at a point of time. It's the simplest form of observational study. Okay. Then, then what is this longitudinal study? Longitudinal means um, over a prolonged period of time. Okay. So there is follow up. So there is emphasis on the uh, follow up. So observations are repeated. The same observations you are repeating on the same population over a prolonged period of time. Here it is at a point time. Here it is at a prolonged period of time. Then after this, what will come guys? You will compare it with the known incidence, uh, inc indices, sorry, indices. So you can arrive at some clues on the disease etiology. You will compare the populations, you will compare the subgroups, you will compare based on time, you will compare based on people, etc. And you will come up with some hypothesis. Finally, what should you do? You should come up with some hypothesis, okay? So what should be there in a hypothesis? So the po uh, things that should be there in a hypothesis, population, right? The characteristics, uh, characteristics of the person's to whom the hypothesis applies. You have to describe the population. Guys, okay, so we are just uh, concluding this video, okay, on descriptive studies. We'll just finish off this pop hypothesis thing, last point, okay. So actually we were looking at person distribution, I understand, but we just complete it off till here. So a hypothesis should what have, it should, it should uh, specify the population, it specify the cause being considered outcome, possible cause and outcome, that means the risk factor and the disease. Then the dose response relationship, that means the amount of cause that is needed to uh, for this outcome, that is the disease. And time response relationship, the time period that will elapse between the exposure. So after 20 years of uh, smoking, the person will get lung cancer, something like that, right? So you have to uh, show the population, you have to show the cause, you have to show the outcome, you have to show the dose response relationship and also the time response relationship all this will come in a hypothesis now what do you do with the hypothesis go back here and see you will take this hypothesis and you will go to an analytical study use the analytical study and whether you will say this hypothesis is correct or wrong what is is there actually an association between the suspected cause and the outcome is there an association you will find out and then you will also come up with the strength of association all that is because of analytical studies as of now we only have a hypothesis okay so descriptive study will finally just give you a hypothesis which is incomplete or it could, uh, you know, need, it's just a clue, you know, that possibly smoking is causing lung cancer. It's just a clue for you. You will have to prove it in analytical studies. Okay. That's all for now, guys, in this video. Hope you have learned something. Bye-bye.